Hey there, I'm Father Roderick, and in this video, I want to give you my reaction to the first episode of the final season of Star Wars, The Clone Wars. Season 7 is finally here, after years and years and years of waiting. For me, it's very special because only a few weeks ago I, did, I recorded a reaction video to the trailer for season 7 and back then I confessed that I'd only seen the first two seasons or actually just a season and a half of Star Wars The Clone Wars but I was so excited that we would get to see more of this series that I wanted to do a reaction video. Had I known what I know now I think my reaction would have been even more uh, excited because in the meantime, uh, kind of preparing for this final season, I've been watching the first three seasons, uh, all the episodes again, uh, and most of them of course were new, especially for the third season. And then I just ran out of time. I just couldn't find the time to go and watch all the episodes of these uh, remaining seasons. But what I did, and I was super grateful for that, was I followed the list for 20 must-see episodes to prepare for this final season. And I have to say, it completely blew me away. Uh, there is still a lot for me to discover, but at least with these 20 episodes, I've got the main storyline and probably also all the knowledge that I need to enjoy this final season. And wow, 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 what a great series. I'm so glad that many of you have encouraged me to keep watching, even though I had my doubts about certain elements of the Clone Wars, especially in these early seasons. But everybody told me, just keep watching, it will get better. It will get better in terms of animation, in terms of the, you know, the, the, whole, the way the series looks, um, but it will certainly get much, much better story-wise, and that is exactly what happened. I loved, loved the storyline of the return of Darth Maul with his brother. I totally did not see that coming. I hadn't read any spoilers uh, in these, these past few years. So for me, that was a huge surprise that Maul had a brother, brother. The way in which he returned was awesome. The way he grew into, you know, this very dangerous villain again. And it even gave me some clues to understand uh, the, the, the appearance of Darth Maul at the end of Solo. Um, and his, you know, the backstory of him getting involved in this underworld, this this this, this criminal gang, um, th that was great. I loved also the whole Mandalore story and this this the attack on Mandalore and how Maul was involved at one point. I I I was shocked, shocked and very emotional about the storyline of Ahsoka uh, and her betrayal. And 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 the, the 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 her decision to walk away from the Jedi Order. Whoa, that was such a gut punch, and I I totally didn't see that coming. In hindsight, that was in the trailer, and uh, in the, the trailer for season seven, I completely missed it. Um, and I'm I, I'm kind of glad that I that I overlooked that because I didn't know what was going to happen, and and so that um, that decision really hit me hard. And it also gave me a lot of hope for this final season because we know from the trailer that she will be back and she will even get face to face with Darth Maul. There was another detail that I noticed when I rewatched the trailer for season seven and that is at one point she's facing this whole group of, of, of clones, of clone warriors, and their helmets are painted in the same pattern as the pattern on her own face, which leads me to believe that uh, Ahsoka is going to lead this battalion of clones at one point, which is totally, totally awesome. Um, but we have to start with the beginning of this season. These first four episodes actually have been in the making for many, many years. And I know that some of you are, have, are, are huge fans of The Clone Wars, have maybe seen the series multiple times and know exactly what is going to happen in these first four episodes. Why? Because they are based on a story that was already in development when Lucasfilm was still working on season, I think even season five or season, yeah, season five. They were working on season five. And then the big change happened for Lucasfilm. They were acquired by Disney. We all know what happened next. And Disney, to everyone's surprise and shock, stopped the Clone Wars series. 
And I think the reason was uh, that, uh, uh, like, I think the Cartoon Network had the rights to the Clone Wars series, but Disney wanted to have its own Star Wars series on, on uh, Disney XD. And so they halted the Clone Wars and they started Star Wars Rebels, which was great. I mean, I, I love Star Wars Rebels. I've seen about uh, two seasons now and, and it's, it's pretty good but it left us all hanging with the Clone Wars. However, uh, back then, Lucasfilm was already very far ahead in the production of, of uh, another season. And I think they even planned to do like eight seasons. So there were a lot of storylines that were already there and also a lot of episodes that were kind of halfway done. Um, so season six, very short season, was uh, based on all these leftover episodes. And a lot of them are kind of uh, individual storylines uh, and they've, they've been finished, but it wasn't a real season in the sense that it missed that, that uh, you know, longer mythology or the, 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 the bigger picture of the entire series. That is probably also why none of these season six episodes were part of that list of 20 must-see episodes that I, uh, that I enjoyed watching. So uh, all the episodes end uh, at the end of, of, of season five. But the beginning of season seven is based on four episodes that were already uh, in pre-production to the point that they created these reels or you could say these animated storyboards. Um, so basically what they do nowadays, and not just for animation, but also for, for regular movies uh, that oftentimes include a lot of special effects, they will, they will do like a very simplistic computer animation where the camera moves and all that is already done. The, the, the voice acting is already recorded and they will give you a very kind of raw uh, idea of what that episode looks like. And the four first episodes of this final season were already published. Those reels were shown, I think, at one time at a, a Star Wars convention, maybe one of the Star Wars celebrations. Um, and of course, fans got super excited because they looked amazing, the story was amazing, and that's how this whole movement came about of, you know, give us, give us the end of Clone Wars, revive Clone Wars. We want to see the end of this story. And once Disney started Disney Plus, they knew that they, that's what they wanted to give the fans. And so now we finally get to see the finished versions of those episodes. And um, the, of course, the animation is far superior to what fans have been able to see in the reels uh, and in those animated storyboards. But the stories are basically the same. I'll get to uh, the differences in a, in a minute. But then, once we've seen these first four episodes, then it's all going to be a huge surprise. And what we don't know is how much of the original stories that were written, and probably also co-written by George Lucas at the time, uh, because he was heavily involved in, in the Clone Wars uh, storyline and was working with Filoni and some other writers, um, how much of those original stories will have survived? If, if they did, then this is probably gonna be really the, the storytelling legacy of George Lucas. This is probably one of the last projects in which he has been very much involved on all levels, mostly of course in the stories. But it's also possible that they've decided to kind of update the story, maybe do some more crossovers, not just with the prequels, we know that from the trailer, that there will be a lot of things, uh, like the timeline will overlap at one point, which I think is super exciting, that we'll get to see more of the backstory of, of uh, the, um, the Revenge of the Sith. Um, but there may be other ways in which they're gonna link to current productions. The thing that intrigues me most is the possibility of a link to the Mandalorian. And I think that, that Favreau has hinted at that, saying that the backstory of the Mandalorian, when we see the flashbacks when he is, was a child and he is saved from these battle droids by these Mandalorians, well, 
that is probably part of the storyline of the Clone Wars as well, because we see the whole Mandalore backstory. So I wouldn't be surprised uh, if we get to see maybe the, uh, an animated version of the Mandalorian, this rescue scene that we see in the first season of the Mandalorian. Maybe, who knows, maybe even Baby Yoda. Why not? He was already alive. <laughs> He's an old guy. So I don't know. That would be, I think, one of those added things, things that they, they integrate in the final season to kind of weave it into the other stories that, being, that are being told in, in, the, in the familiar Star Wars timeline. So let's, let's look at the, uh, the episode itself, what I loved, uh, lessons learned, the things that I'm excited about, maybe also some things that, I, that could, be, could have been better, although I have a hard time coming up with, with points for that. But let's start with the difference between the, um, let's say, these existing reels that, that are available. I've, I've watched at least one episode on, on YouTube. I'm not sure if it was... Uh, uploaded legally, but it, uh, uh, just Google for it. You'll probably find a, a copy somewhere. Um, and and the final result. Well, to my great surprise, I, so I first watched the first episode, The Bad Batch, um, loved it, and then I I went and watched the original uh, storyboard version. And to my great surprise, the story was almost identical. Even the animations, the camera views. Of course, you're looking at very rudimentary animation. And the kicker for me was to see how good this looks. I mean, they really upped their game. I already loved the, you know, seasons five and parts of season six that I've seen. Um, in terms of animation, there's really this, this, this step up at one point in the series. But this is even beyond that. This looks so good animation wise. Clearly they used motion capture for this, uh, but the, also the text, textures, the colors, the, the lighting, um, the, the, the amount of stuff going on in the background, all these little details. Um, it's, it's, it's the best that I've seen so far. I, I think I would even go as far as to say that this, this tops the animation that we've seen in, in Star Wars Rebels. Let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree. Um, but uh, the, so the, the voice acting is the same, the story is almost the same, except for one, I only noticed one detail, and there may be some other minor details that are changed. Um, but this one is a, is a plot point. At one point, uh, this is the beginning of the story, when, when Rex is discussing with the others that he notices that uh, the Separatists seem to be able to predict the attack pattern uh, patterns that they use, that the, the clone warriors use. And so that makes him believe that they somehow got hold of the algorithm that they study to, you know, diversify their attacks. And as soon as they start repeating themselves too much, then this algorithm is able to predict what they're going to do. And in the original version, Rex says that he has created, he has written that algorithm, which would make him quite a sophisticated clone, I have to say. Um, and, and in this final version, they kind of keep that um, a little bit more um, vague, you know. But, but what he does notice is that this, this algorithm is based on, on his and his former friend Echo, who has died, at least we thought that he died. Um, that, that it was based on, on their, you know, battle genius, on, on their strategies. And so, uh, but th that, that's one thing that I noticed. And then of course, everything looks like a hundred million times better than, than the original one. So it's absolutely worth uh, watching the, the, final, the final result. Um, let's talk about what I loved about the Bad Batch, of course, because that's, that's kind of the, the, the center point. What I like about this whole plot line, and I'm not sure if the, if the next three episodes are also going to focus on the Bad Batch. I hope so, because I, I definitely believe that they have earned their place now in, in the storyline. What I love about this, this uh, first episode is that it immediately makes us all feel at ease. This is what Clone Wars is all about. It's about wars being fought by clones. And so they don't step away from the 
from what fans have loved in all the previous seasons. Um, they, so they focus on the clones and they focus, and this is also something vital to the Clone War series, they focus on the humanity of the people involved and on the humanity of the clones as well. And uh, that is probably one of the major developments in the seasons that I've watched, uh, compared, especially compared to the first few seasons, is that more and more this human side of the war is the emphasis. And you, so you don't get these cookie cutter battles anymore. There's much more every, they, they do their best to make these battles feel more personal because we get to know the different characters, the different clones and the different Jedi that are involved. And, and so the more you get to know all these characters, the more evocative these battles become. But at the beginning of the series, they all kind of look the same, but it's just because it, they don't have a face yet. So that's what I love about this first episode. We get this battle and we get to see this new group of clones. Um, I think officially they're called Clone Force 99. And there's this throwaway comment by, I think it was Rex. So that, that's an appropriate name. And I just kind of like, uh, what does he mean? And then it hit me. Of course, this refers to this other faulty clone, this maintenance clone that we've seen, was it in the first or in the second, I think it's in the second season, um, where you, this, you, you see the training of the, the domino uh, squad. Uh, these, these clone troopers that are not very good. And uh, they are, they have a really difficult time coming together as a squad, as a group. And then at one point, even one of the group uh, wants to go for it by himself and wants to abandon his team. And then there's this clone 99 who uh, is quite old and uh, doesn't have the strength of, of, of the other clones. He was kind of rejected and discarded, never became a warrior. And yet he is the one who, who manages to convince that team, the Domino squad, to come together and to fight as a team. And that's how they become ultimately very, very powerful. And so this squad is also a group of, you could say it's like a dysfunctional family, all by themselves. They, they have these anomalies, they have these genetic mutations. Um, they're all like improvements. It's, this is kind of like the X-Men squad of the, of the clone troopers. And so individually, they all have superior abilities compared to regular clones. So you've got uh, Hunter, who has this, this super, almost super power of being able to sense uh, where the enemy is and then and, and sends all sorts of waves and, and frequencies. And so he's, he's really good at, 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 at finding the enemy. You've got uh, Wrecker, who is kind of like the Hulk <laughs> in a certain way. He's got supernatural powers or su superpowers, let's put, put it that way. You've got uh, the, the sharpshooter, what's his name? Um, I, I gotta take, take my notes here. Um, was it like Bullseye or no? <laughs> <laughs> Not bullseye. Um, crosshair. That's crosshair. I was thinking bullseye because, you know, superheroes. Um, so crosshair with his tattoo on his on his eye. Not very subtle, but hey, it, it, it works. And then you've got tech. Not a very creative name either, but it shows what he's able to do. But they, so they all have these very amazing powers, but by themselves, they would probably never be able to get very far. However, it's as a team that they are really surpassing anything that other squads could do. And that is why they are hired here, or well, they're not hired, they're not, <laughs> but they, they are commissioned to go behind enemy lines to figure out what's going on with this algorithm and how uh, the enemy knows to, uh, how to predict uh, the, the, uh, the way um, the attacks will, will form. And so uh, we, we encounter this, this bad batch, referring of course to the fact that they're, they're actually not very, they were not the cookie cutter clones that everyone thought they would be, but because they had these superpowers, um, they kind of operate as a separate group. What I love about that plot point is that it, it humanizes these clone warriors even more, um, because not only 
don't they look like regular clones? but they also have different voices. Um, some of them have very small faces like uh, a crosshair, uh, you know, the huge size of, of, of Wrecker. Um, Rambo is there, <laughs> or at least Hunter looks like, like, looks like Rambo. And then you've got, I think this is the second character in the Star Wars universe that wears glasses, and that is Tech. Um, the other one is, of course, the Doctor in, uh, in The Mandalorian, who also has these kind of circular glasses. And that is... I'm, there may have even been a rule uh, that, that Star Wars characters don't have glasses. George Lucas was very particular about certain of these things. So, you know, the glasses don't exist in, um, in, in the Star Wars universe. Or what do you used to say to uh, Carrie Fisher? Like, uh, there is no underwear in, in the Star Wars universe. <laughs> <laughs> Very weird. But anyway, so they kind of broke this rule and gave him glasses as well. But they're very likable because they are so different. And in that way, they more resemble us. Regular human beings, non-cloned human beings, because we are all different sizes, different abilities. Um, and of course, the, the question is, will this work? And well, we have the answer. It works amazingly. And actually, this is the second point that I wanted to make that uh, I thought was really fun about this episode. This Bad Batch is actually based on tropes that we know very well. You may have been watching this episode and thinking, this feels so familiar. We've, we've never seen the Bad Batch before, and yet you feel like you know them. Well, it is because they function like a co-op game. Remember Team Fortress, the Valve game and Team Fortress 2? This, this is exactly that. So Team Fortress is a game where you, you uh, play online with uh, most of the time eight other people. Well, I'm actually not sure if it's eight people. Anyway, there are eight or nine, no, there are nine classes in Team Fortress. And uh, each player has to choose a speciality, so uh, a, a class. So you've got the sharpshooter, you've got it like a cross-eye type of guy. You've got, you know, the, the wrecker, the, the, the strong, it's, it's what they call a tank, uh, usually. So it's someone who's very good, it's a defense class. He can, you know, stay put and, and withhold the, the enemy uh, so that the others are safe. And so you've got Hunter that is, Definitely kind of a soldier scout class, I would say, in, in, in if you look for a video game equivalent. Um, so you've got the tank, you've got tech. I would say that's more like a spy class. So he's very good with technology, but it's, it's a support class. So he is, he is, uh, uh, he can't, he would not survive alone because he's not very strong, but he's very smart. So you need a character like that. And then you've got the, well, the, uh, you've got Bullseye, who is the sniper, uh, the sniper class. And if you see them fight, it, it is as if you're looking at a video game. Like at one point when, when they need transport and Sniper or uh, Crosshair says, oh, that can be arranged. And, and you see, you know, his, uh, what he sees through his, his uh, what is it, um, telescope on, on, on top of his gun. And it, it totally looks like a video game. Even the headshots are like any first person shooter. So I'm wondering, is this gonna be a prelude to maybe a co-op game that they're developing? I, I would totally go for it. <laughs> if I were Disney, I was like, yeah, just do give us a team fortress based on these classes, but then with clone warriors, give us a, an extended bad batch. And I, I think that a lot of fans would love to play that game. So that's why it feels so, so familiar. Um, let's see, what else have I got in my notes? I thought this would be a very quick review, but there, there's so much to be happy with. Um, well, and of course, you've, you've got the, the message of, of the episode. Um, and, and, and that is, a, I think, a very Star Wars type of message. Um, don't be afraid of, of your differences. Embrace the, the differences. And, uh, and, and, and that's when you will win. Um, I think there's even, what was the quote that they give at the beginning of the episode? Embrace others for their differences, for that makes you whole. I love that quote. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful lesson. 
that you can only be whole if you dare to depend on others. And, and so it's kind of the opposite of this individualist mentality that you encounter nowadays so often. And maybe we're all kind of guilty of that, where we all want to do everything ourselves. We don't need anyone else. Well, this, this story is a story about how much stronger and how much more yourself you become if you realize that you depend on others and that you are made to work with others and to be part of a community. Um, from a religious point of view, I would say that is in the fabric of our, our creation. When God created man, he didn't create them as individuals, but he created them as you know, even the first two people, Adam and Eve, they were created in the sense that they had to, they needed each other. They were different, <laughs> very different. You can't get more different than man and woman. And that, and, but only together they have a future. Literally, they have an offspring and they can build the world. And so it's, it's this, this dependency on each other that is part of who we are as human beings. Um, and, and it's something that we have to learn and discover in our lives. We all have had this, this time in our lives as, as children where we wanted to do everything ourselves. I have a photo, a black and white photo of when I was one year old, and I was convinced that I di didn't need anyone to, for, for eating my porridge. And the result is the spoon is in my ear and the porridge is all over my face. <laughs> and, uh, well, I had to discover that maybe I needed some guidance <laughs> when it comes to eating porridge. I've mastered that, that skill, by the way, <laughs> over time. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's just, it's a, a very commonplace message, but still really cool at the start of this episode because it puts us right back at what Star Wars is all about. It, 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 Star Wars is a mirror. It wants to teach us how which choices we have to make and how we can make this world a better place uh, the the galaxy far far away is actually very very close by um, and the the lessons that we learn in these stories are lessons that we can apply immediately in our own lives as well so that is definitely uh something that i appreciated of this um uh of this episode and there's of course one theme that is announced at the end of the episode with the discovery of the fact that Echo is alive. And that is, of course, well, one of these future episodes is going to be a rescue mission. You know, leave no man behind. Once you know that your friend is in danger, has been imprisoned, and who knows what, uh, what they've done to him. Uh, maybe they they are you know they've turned him into a cyborg after all the the arachnid uh, bad guy what's his name anyway the the uh, also has these cybernetic extensions because well his ship was blown up by by Anakin in season two I think um, so maybe they they but he got hurt also in an explosion so so maybe they took over his brain. But leads me to believe that the, one of the next stories is going to be this rescue mission, um, which, in a way, also uh, uh, I, is a nice sequel to the theme of this episode, and that is you need each other. And uh, someone who is imprisoned, who is uh, captured by the enemy, needs the the others to for to to be rescued, to be saved. All right, that's it. Um, let me know what you thought. Is there anything that I forgot to mention? Is, what was your favorite moment or your favorite aspect of this first episode of The Bad Batch? Let me know in the comments. And the second question that I have is if you could play this co-op game based on these various classes, what would be your favorite character of the Bad Batch? What is your favorite play style in these co-op games? Let me know in the comments. And again, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see my future updates and like and share if uh, you want to help me get the word out about this channel. Thank you so much for watching. May the force be with you and I will see you next week.